everyone and welcome, I guess welcome back, I don't know, I think this, this is the first time I'm returning back to my YouTube channel after a, a kind of a long hiatus. Um, as some of my Dolphin fans out there who may have been following me uh, all this time, you may recall I was uh, co-hosting for the Fin Addicts and we've kind of been on hiatus for a while, well, since the unfortunate and untimely passing of my co-host. Uh, the man, the myth, the mustache, Mr. Brian Byrne, who has now been immortalized in this jersey back here, um, which I will be wearing, by the way, to Miami's final home game of the season on January 9th, which happens to be my birthday, um, against the Patriots. So if you do, please follow me on Twitter, reach out to me. I would love to meet you. If this man touched your life in any way, if you, uh, spoke to him, said hi to him, argued with him, or had your day brightened by his dad joke of the day, come over. I'll be actually hanging with some of his family, his sisters, uh, nephews, and it's going to be a good time. And I'd love it if you'd come over and sign that jersey, you know, as, as a beautiful tribute to him. It would be really cool. So you're probably wondering, though, so what the hell brought you back after all this time so suddenly? And I didn't want to come back after last week's game when we got shut out by Buffalo. It was That was going to be a little too hard, and I wasn't prepared to do that. But after this past week, Miami brought me to the point where I had to resurrect a segment from my original podcast, Seriously Sports, prompting me to ask the question, Miami. What the f was that? Are you kidding me? <laughs> so let's back this up. For everybody that was watching the game, you saw it. We started off pretty good. Uh, defense was doing well, as the defense is expected to. Uh, Landon Roberts caught an interception, takes it all the way to the house for a touchdown. We go up 7-0. Awesome. Um, following that, defense stops the Raiders. They punt, we get it back, our offense drives the field, we score a touchdown, awesome, we're up 14-0, to we're loving that. Defense makes another stop, forces another three and out, they punt it, they down it at Miami's one yard line, at which point Byron Jones makes the curious decision to try and pull the Raider who had the ball into the end zone, hoping to force a touchback, which I get where he's coming from, but bad decision and I tweeted as such quoting I can't remember who it was uh, you, Charles Davis or Brandon Godden um, who said yeah you don't compound a bad situation with a bad decision and that's exactly what he did and somebody actually well went at the uh, no I mean they, they just they tweeted in kind of his defense I guess saying that it was just a one inch penalty it doesn't matter as I told him it's about the principle you know, they're, they're better coached than that. They're supposed to be more disciplined than that. And it doesn't matter if it is 20 yards or one inch. is one inch in the wrong direction. We're going that way, not this way, okay? You just don't do that. Either way, all of that is negated by the fact that apparently the offensive coordinators, note plural, coordinators, because we're not really 100% sure who's calling the plays anymore at this point, but... Uh, they apparently didn't get that memo because they would follow it up by making the most curious play call I think I've ever seen. We're going to run a screen pass in our own end zone. You have Jalen Waddle out there to the left. He has no blockers in front of him. Nobody to stop this corner who's covering him from raining in on him and hitting him the second he catches the ball, and that's what happens. Bam, safety, two points. We punt back to the Raiders. They drive back down the field, kick a field goal. Now it's 14-5, Miami over the Raiders. However, the damage had been done. That swung the momentum in their favor, and we didn't put up another score until the fourth quarter. And at which point we came back, putting up 11, and then three more in overtime. Came so close and we let it slip away. And it's so unfortunate, you know, initially when I bought all this equipment, this camera that I'm recording with, the light that's illuminating this beautiful face of mine, the original plan was I had a whole 
idea about doing a video talking about how quality football is returning to the state of Florida and how excited I was about that. But in the ensuing time since, I mean, Tampa's still doing good, so they're still the reigning Super Bowl champ, so, you know, whatever. Uh, but Jacksonville drafted the consensus for like three years, the consensus number one overall pick, Trevor Lawrence, and they have looked like hot garbage in the time since then. Uh, Miami has somehow reverted back from what was an actually pretty decent team to whatever the hell is going on down there now. And then my favorite college team, FSU, just... Uh, I don't even have the heart for that one. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I don't know what the hell Mike Norvell did or what he was thinking, but that team is also hot garbage now. And it's not because of the players. They have good players. Honestly, I think their biggest mistake is kind of similar to Miami's mistake. The, the offensive coordinator. If, if uh, Mike Norvell had retained Kendall Bryles, who, by the way, whose offense at Arkansas is currently averaging 35 points a game, they'd probably be winning right now. But that's neither here nor there. We're talking about the Dolphins right now. And as far as the Dolphins are concerned, honestly, and I've seen this come up a couple times on Twitter, we're, we're looking at the offensive coordinator uh, that, was, that first came in with Brian Flores, Chad O'Shea. Um, who had made his career up to that point basically being a wide receivers coach, uh, most notably for the Patriots, who we remember had the reputation of taking a bunch of non-receivers and making good quality receivers out of them. Think about it. Julian Edelman uh, was a college quarterback, and he was good enough as a wide receiver. He ended up being a Super Bowl MVP at one point. He was one of Tom Brady's most dependable weapons. And so to me, it came as no surprise that when he took over as the offensive coordinator in Miami, we suddenly got that breakout season from Devontae Parker that we had longed for. Suddenly he became that guy. He blossomed into it and then came back to earth when Chad O'Shea was fired. None of this is coincidental, in my opinion. And I thought it was a little premature firing him because he started to get it together towards the end of that season. And it was an even more curious idea to hire Chan Gailey out of retirement to replace him. I knew early on, and I remember some of you guys, if you watch my channel, you know, you've seen it. Um, early on, I think maybe two games into the season, I already put out a video like, we're going to need to move on from this guy. We need a new offensive coordinator. And I gave my short list of who I thought would be a great fit. And actually, funny enough, Kendall Bryles was among them. Um, and naturally, you know, uh, I, I'm who the f am I? Uh, <laughs> so my opinion wasn't really paid much attention to, which is fine. Uh, but then they made the curious decision to go ahead and elevate two people from within our current coaching staff to serve as the offensive coordinators. And... Uh, to pretty mixed results so far, man. This offense has kind of been milk toast up to this point. You know, and uh, unfortunately, these last couple games, specifically this last game, has raised a number of questions within the team, and especially within the fan base when looking at the team, about the team's makeup and how good Tua is, how good he could be. You know, the number one question that you don't want to find yourself having to ask is, is there really that big of difference between our starting quarterback and our backup quarterback, right? Uh, you look at any other team, any of the other teams with an entrenched st uh, starter, look at the Kansas City Chiefs. Ask them about what the drop-off is like between Patrick Mahomes and Chad Henney. You don't have to, because you already know, we all know, that we don't have that same luxury, unfortunately. Um, hell, actually, even funny, funny enough, Houston is kind of going through that. Uh, I feel like they'd probably be doing better if, if Terod Taylor hadn't gotten hurt. I know a lot of people don't think very much of him, but he's been a pretty consummate professional. He's been a pretty damn good quarterback throughout his career, albeit playing it safe. He's been uh, kind of the mobile Alex Smith in that way, but, I mean, he hasn't been bad, and they were good enough to win 
week one, and I think that they they probably could have continued winning if he hadn't have gotten hurt, but that's neither here nor there. But that is the question that's being risen amongst Miami faithful. Is the drop-off that big? And not so much, unfortunately. Now, I'm not ragging against Tua or anything, but I guess it should probably be known I was never a huge fan of Tua going into it. I didn't care for or believe the hype before when he was in Alabama. And, uh... Things that I was concerned about specifically, not so much his stature. I think Kyler Murray kind of came in and blew all that stuff out of the water. Any, if Kyler Murray can succeed in this league, anybody of any size could. Uh, of course, uh, don't take that so literally. Mm. Nah. But uh, I was a little concerned about arm strength, but you know you can you can scheme around that. So it wasn't that wasn't a huge deal. Uh, there, I think that it is notable to consider how many of Tua's wide receivers not only got drafted, but got drafted in the first round. Uh, quite a number of them, so that's something to keep into consideration. Then, of course, the injuries. I had jumped onto the caboose of the Tua, high, of the Tua train as it was going, uh, all the way up until that hip injury. When he dislocated that hip, fractured the hip wall and also broke his nose on that same play I was out I'm like okay take anybody take Justin Herbert who admittedly I didn't all I also didn't care for at the time but you know I'm, I'm willing to admit I was wrong um I'd take anybody at that point to me you know that in my opinion but you know when he got drafted I said all right threw my hands up and said okay well he's ours now so I'm rooting for him and I'm hoping for the best but then you got all these people. Nobody really saw anything particularly special out of him. I'm not saying you can't win with him. You can absolutely win with him. He's accurate enough. And if you can keep him protected, as we learned during that Buffalo game, we cannot do. I don't understand how the offensive line looks like that. How much How much draft capital have we invested in that offensive line? And, and it looks like that. They couldn't protect Tua at all. It was open season on him during that Buffalo game, which is how he ended up leaving with an injury to begin with. So the question then becomes, where do we go from here? You know, the fan base is very torn on it. Uh, it sounds like, uh, based on what the media seems to believe, and I guess, I don't know, they have sources, I don't have sources, but it seems like the, the organization might be real interested in Deshaun Watson, provided he can clean up those, uh, you know, allegations. And, uh, we got to figure out what to do from here. Because unfortunately, the team's no longer playing complimentary football. The offense looks like milk toast, even with all those weapons. And I think, if anything, that's what they prove, is that it doesn't matter how many weapons you have. As we think about it, we drafted Jalen Waddle, brought, uh, brought in Will Fuller. We got Albert Wilson back. Devontae Parker's still there. Mike Gesicki's still there. Miles Gaskin's still there. Salvan Ahmed's still there. Um... And there's other, Mac Hollins still there. We still got a bunch of weapons. And even infused more speed into it. Jakeem Grant's still there. And yet, offense still looked as basic as ever. So, where's the problem? That is what we're going to have to figure out. Now, I, I'm glad you guys stuck in there to listen to me bitch, because I, I really didn't prepare anything. I just sat down to complain at this camera for a little bit. I don't even know if I'm going to upload this, and if I do, thanks for watching. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I guess I really just needed to get it out, because I've just been complaining, and my wife's tired of listening to me bitch about it, because, <laughs> well, you know, I do it a lot. But uh, God bless her soul, man, because she's just the sweetest thing walking on two feet. Uh, she puts up with me on the regular and this year it more than any other year She's really bought in and when we first got together. I don't think she knew anything about football She didn't know the difference between a quarterback and a cornerback and now she's playing fantasy football in my league with me and you know my friends and stuff and it's kind of a neat occurrence because she is catching a lot of people by surprise um, I am not really helping you know I assist with some of uh, personnel decisions and stuff and certain things that maybe she's not familiar with it being her first time playing fantasy football but she's doing surprisingly well 
and uh, I'm hoping to see how this materializes. It's going to be really great, but it's gotten her watching more football with me, which has opened up my Sundays, so it's all that's always a good thing, you know? I honestly find myself asking, gosh, can I just marry you again? You know? <laughs> uh, but anyways, like I said, that's it for this one. Short and sweet. So I guess be sure to subscribe, like, subscribe, and share with the people. And of course, I'll see you around here some other time when I have other shit to bitch about or rave about or who knows. Hopefully we can get a victory in and we can actually have something good to say aside from week one when, you know, we seem to catch the Patriots off guard. But now we're learning, was that an aberration or do the Patriots just not all that good this year? Guess we're going to see. Uh, what do we have coming up next? I, I haven't, you know, I, I haven't looked. We're going to go play the Colts. And uh, they're 0-3 currently, and, uh, you know, provided that Carson Wentz maintains the way that he's he's going, you know, we, we might just get a win out there, too. Why the hell not? Oh, wait, except, oh, yeah, it's down there in Miami as well. But then we travel up to Tampa to face the Buccaneers. And, uh... I'm so glad I did not get tickets to that game because that that would have just been super sad. I would have been at that game with my with my dad, who's also a Dolphin faithful, and um, uh, we all probably would have been too drunk to drive home. And you know, then, then people get kind of rowdy out there. I don't know how many of y'all have been to Tampa, but I've got a lot of family out there, and uh, there's some rowdy folks out there, uh, especially when their team is winning. So, whoo. So either way, once again, that's all. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share with the people to get you some more of this. Follow me on Twitter, at SeriouslySavak. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.